Hi, I'm Brittany Ice Dennis, and I am a program manager within the Open Source Program Office at Comcast. My main focus is on the delivery of open source software as well as community building. So my journey to becoming an open source program manager is pretty interesting. I graduated from Temple University in Philadelphia with a teaching degree, and I'm lifetime certified K through sixth grade elementary and N through 12th grade special educator. I taught fourth and fifth grade for the first two years of my um, career, and I decided I'm, I'm seeing a gap within technology. So I moved to become the lead technology trainer at the school. And then as I'm working through those processes, I see that we can work things at a bigger level. So I moved into educational technology and with working with superintendents and teachers from all across the country, helping teachers become better advocates for tech and their students. So to be completely honest, they did that for a few years, but I was just so tired of commuting. So I decided to make the jump to Comcast and that was about five minutes away from my house. And so now here I am. So this is actually my second talk for external conferences. So fingers crossed, I don't bungle it too bad. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So over the past six months, the team and I have been working tirelessly in getting our inner source infrastructure off the ground. Now that the program is established, we're simply asking ourselves, now what? So Comcast is a Fortune 50 company with over 7,000 technologists working on a variety of different projects to support the common goal of inter entertainment, internet speed and reliability, and new innovation that is yet to even be seen. We all know that with any company, small or large, working together is paramount for success. But many times we all know that the work that is being done is consisting of duplicated efforts. It happens all the time. So at Comcast, what we want to do is we want to break the wheel of repetitive motion and change how we think about streamlining projects with and containing consistent collaboration. So a little bit about this Ferris wheel. This is the Wonder Wheel at Coney Island in New York City. This wheel is one of the most backwards and forwards and all over the place wheel, but it all ends up back together. So that's kind of what we're hoping happens. You know, we want each project to do something different, but yet all come together to be one. So with that being said, what have we done about it? So six months ago, our leader, Nithya Ruff, spoke back to the ISC in the spring about why we believe Intersource is important and why more companies, including our own, have started thinking about this mindset and really want that internal cultural change. It's been a great privilege for myself to be a part of the ISC community and help where I could because I found so much value in this organization's knowledge. And for that, I really do thank this group. We then took all of the information that we have garnered over the past six months and we wanted to start our own inner source program. So we knew if we were going to do something big and within a change to the cultural mindset, was something that was currently pretty organic growing and relatively pretty holistic to the process, we knew we couldn't go at it alone. And so this is why we established our phenomenal inner source guild. The guild is comprised of team members from security, architecture, and the open source program office. And you'll actually see some very familiar faces in this group, one being that of our OSPO leader, Nithya Ruff, and the two fellow ISC community members, Sheila Sabi and Fei Wan. It's important to get multiple perspectives when starting something new because you may think it's the best way, but you might be wrong and you might not always be right. So in the true nature of InnerSource, we collaborated. It's so important to get multiple perspectives on different situations. And so that's why the Guild was formed. And it was also important to us to have higher level executives in the Guild like Nithya and Matt Dimmick. These are the team members that are going to put us in front of the right groups that will actually make this change happen. So as the Guild, we vet projects based on standards that we develop, which I'll speak to soon. And we currently have 48 internal operating inner source projects. When we started this process six months ago, we only had 13. Another nod to Faye, the next slides have these beautiful mind maps that are easy to read and lay out the high level of all of the work that we have done. So, okay, we created a fancy guild, you know? So what are the benefits of this guild? 
So what we do is we work with teams within the internal community to get the project that they want out there noticed. We get them followers, we get them contributors, we, we aid them in writing blog posts. We have educational showcase series that go out to our entire community that showcase the project that they're working on. And we really just empower innovation within the community itself. You know, the more people have eyes on something, the more innovative they can be. And so that's just something that we find to be very important. We guide the mindset change for transparency within projects and cultivate a very collaborative engineering culture. We aid teams that are working within the inner source sphere to accelerate development on their projects and we hope to get them to market faster. We've also created a comprehensive checklist in which all inner source repositories should follow that in the guide of what the ISC has provided. Not only is this checklist important for successful inner source practices, it's also just good practice for proper repository hygiene. I mean, how many times have we come across a project and you have no idea what it is or what it does? So many times. Well, this checklist, <laughs> this checklist will hopefully remove that concept. So we have transparency. On the transparency branch, we essentially want the repository to be approved and open. We don't want any secrets in it. We, we want to make sure that it follows along the best practices for internal use. So you have a GitHub enterprise public repository. What should that look like? So communication, this is really just as simple as does your repo contain everything that it needs for a contributor to come in, learn about the project, and get started on some work? Is your readme up to date? Does the external contributor know who to contact? Do you have a contributing guide? You know, so culture is very important too because that's the big shift. And we wanna make sure that before the project goes out into the open, we want the leader and the leadership to back that project. We want them to know what's going on. So that's where the cultural mind shift is taking place. So meritocracy, the one thing that we've learned by listening to talks and discussions within the ISC is that some teams are afraid to give up that misconception of control within their projects. We empower teams to have their own trusted committers and processes in place that work best for them when entering into the inner source space. So that way the fear of losing control is immediately gone right at the start. Community, very simply, we wanna make sure that anyone coming into the project would be able to work on it. We showcase the project in a variety of different ways via Slack, curated on our self-hosted inner source website, and we showcase the series as well as the wonderful, fantastic inner source metrics dashboard, which we'll be talking about next. So we've done a lot of things, but one of the most impactful things that we've done within the guild is we've created this in inner source metrics dashboard. Carl Leiby was the one that pioneered this dashboard and it's really, really cool to see it come to fruition. So, once the project itself has been vetted and we deemed it ready for inner source, it goes into this particular dashboard. Unfortunately, I can't show you that, but I can tell you a little bit about it. So at a glance, any team member within the organization can log into the dashboard and see top projects in the list based on stars and followers. They can see right away what the project's all about. They can sort the project based on code type. They can search for the projects based on program type, for example, continuous integration, continuous deployment. They can see at a glance how many pull requests are open, pull requests are closed, how many PRs have been merged, and how many issues are actually open, but based on project type. So that's really, really cool. And finally, we can see which repos are currently up to speed with all of their documentation. So if you see a project in the dashboard that doesn't have a readme up to date, there's a little X. and you know, well, they're not quite there yet. And all of this leads back to our guiding principles and which the checklist is based off of. We've also created a governance model. And so we've known that when starting off a new program, especially when you want to have leadership buying into it, you should have governance backing the project. Governance is based off of the expectations for all team members, and that's including the Inner Source Guild. We have guidelines for trusted committers. We have mentorship opportunities. We have team ownership, transparency, and security involved to ensure that all the projects stay stable and successful. So, you know, we've done all this work and you would think it would be really hard to 
you know, get the program off the ground or so you'd think it'd be a perfect rollout, right? Well, no, that's, that's not how this worked. <laughs> so, you know, it's not how it works in life. So why would it be that simple at work? But to be completely fair, we did just roll this out officially last month to the community. And we do not have a lot of teams talking about Intersource yet. And we believe that while all teams do want to figure out a better way to collaborate, they just don't know about Intersource as a concept. Next steps, we're going to be working with our senior leaders to get their directs to buy in. We're going to be um, changing the mindset of the initial project creation to move towards the comprehensive checklist. We want it to be simple as just plug and play. Here's my project, here are the steps that I need to take, and then you can just take it away from there. You know, further education with teams, which is always a challenge since our company is so large, but we are getting there. And continue to share all of the inner source wins that we can, because everybody loves a good story. Now, let's say you're doing that this particular type of initiative at your company and are you noticing like yes it's a lot of work it really is but you know it hang in there because it'll all be worth it in the grand scheme of things and together we can break the wheel of repetition and with that thank you all very much